Hey everyone, welcome back to the Half Soybean channel. My name is Sharon and today we are finally making the highly, highly requested hanbok skirt. I don't even know how it's the second half of November already. I spent a quarter of the year in lockdown and somehow we're nearing the end of 2021. But it also means it is a time when Annalisa has the biggest sale of the year. They are running their Black Friday sale right now and you can buy one and get your second piece of jewelry at 60% off. So if there's anything you've been eyeing, you know, collecting in your cart over the year, now is the time to check out because the bargains are awesome. I actually got these two rings for myself and they look so good together. I was actually flicking through the Nala product photos and I saw that the model had paired these two rings together and I thought they looked so cute that I purchased them together and I think if you do get these rings they do belong in a pair. I think they're so so adorable. I'm usually so terrible at mixing and matching my own jewelry but that's what I really like about Ana Luisa because whatever you kind of throw one together they look really amazing and my friends are always complimenting on how nice my jewelry looks and I'm like girl head on over to Ana Luisa. Whether you want something for yourself or your friends and family it's always nice to get a bit of a sale and I have been wearing Ana Luisa jewelry for over a year so 100% they are amazing quality and these safety pin earrings are also one of my all-time favorites and they go so well together as well. Ana Luisa is running the sale between the 18th and the 29th of November so you've got approximately two weeks ish to take advantage, seize the opportunity of this sale where you can buy one and get the second one at 60% off and I would really appreciate if you could go through my link if you do decide to have a browse of their website so Ana Luisa knows that I sent you. But thank you so much Ana Lisa for sponsoring today's video and let's get right into the tutorial. There are three ingredients. No, that's not the right word. I don't know. There's three things you need to have ready, okay? So the first thing is a regular sized dinner fork. I think this is regular sized. I don't really know my forks too well, but we've got a fork. And the second thing we need is some interfacing. This is going to be for the waistband. I don't know how wide your interfacing is, but like the length of it, we need about three to, I don't know, might be about three meters at minimum. Don't pick a interfacing that's too thick. We do want some structure, but if it's too thick, I do think it's a little bit uncomfortable and it looks a bit blocky. The third thing is I would say a minimum of three meters. I'm a bit hesitant to say exactly how much you would need because it is dependent on two things. I don't know exactly what your fork size is and it heavily depends on how much fabric you end up being able to pleat with your fabric and how much it shrinks and it also depends on your waist measurement. I'm going to try and explain how much fabric you need but please bear with me okay you might have seen this hanbok skirt previously in my videos and I actually started with three meters of fabric and I used the exact same fork that I showed you guys to make these fork pleats essentially and now this skirt has shrunken, shrunken to a length of approximately one meter. It's actually about like 110 centimeters, but that means my original three meters of fabric shrunk to one third of the size. Because this is like any other regular wrap skirt, it actually goes around like one and two. And so what that tells you is that your final pleated fabric needs to be at least 1.5 times the circumference of your waist. I hope that makes sense. If that's still too much for you to register, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna give you like approximate standard Australian sizing. I've done some quick multiplication here and this is based off standard Australian clothing sizing with the waist measurements. You can use this as a guide because there is no way it'll be 100% spot on. But one assumption that I am making is that all of us kind of have 
similar forks and that it'll shrink the fabric meterage into about one third of its size. As with most types of wrap skirts, you'll need about 1.5 times the circumference of your waist for it to wrap around nicely. And since we're assuming everyone's forks will reduce everything into a third, the final amount of fabric you may need is about three times that 1.5 times waist value. In other words, you'll need about 4.5 times your original waist circumference. Also, here's a conversion chart if you need to screenshot it. I've got my three meters of fabric laid out on my table. My fabric width is really big. I've just folded it in half and I have to cut it in half. I mean like the length of my skirt from the waist to like the bottom of my legs. And the length of my skirt is about 75 centimeters. I've got it on my highest stitch length because we're just gonna baste it. I'm gonna grab my fork and maybe start about five centimeters from the edge there. Actually, maybe like about 10 centimeters. And so there's my first pleat. And just keep going. On the last prong, go around. Always make sure the pleats are always in one direction. Alrighty, I've done the pleats. They look really, really pretty, but they might seem a little bit frumpy because we haven't pressed them. But once we do, it'll be really crisp and lovely. But before we do that, I want to finish off the raw edges and also the bottom edge. And we're gonna do this by doing like a mitered corner trick. Okay, I'm just gonna explain the mitered corner on a different piece of fabric because it's like a bit hard to see on camera with the red. Basically, I've drawn a 2.5 centimeter line here and also here. So like you would do it around the whole side and the bottom. And I'm also gonna fold it up by half a centimeter and also on this side then I'm gonna fold it up to the line that we drew you can do the same so we've got creases going all around here and so now we want to fold it in the corner so in that second crease, so this is our crease, first crease that we ironed, and here is our second crease that we ironed. We want to make it perpendicular. We draw a line here, 90 degree angles with this diagonal. Gonna fold this part back. So that line here, and that line. I want to snip this, flip everything out. We have a wonderful mitered corner. And there we go. Now we've got mitered corner one and our second mitered corner here. And now we're going to do a stitch to sew everything down. Okie dokie, so we have the pleats. I gave them a little bit of a press so they're a little bit more crisp now. Finished the bottom hem. If you do not know what hanbok means, it is Korean traditional clothing and today we are making a modernized version of it and it's called Senghwal Hanbok and it translates to lifestyle hanbok so people can just wear it a little bit more comfortably, more casually in everyday settings. And today we are making the skirt part of the top and skirt ensemble and it's called a hori chima and hori means waist and chima means skirt so we're essentially making a waist skirt today i suppose and it's a really really in if very simplified it's basically a wrap skirt with pleats a pleated wrap skirt i suppose it's 
really not that difficult. So if you're interested in making Korean clothing or appreciating Korean culture, I hope this is helpful. Measure how long your final skirt length, or not length, waist circumference, how long the pleats have become. For me, it's 106 centimeters. And keep in mind this number because we're gonna need it in the next part of how we draft the waistband pattern. Okay, let's say this is our final skirt. I know this diagram is so atrocious, but I do want that waistband to be eight centimeters tall. So let's make a pattern together. We're essentially making a giant bias tape or like a thick bias tape. First of all, we need the waistband to be at least eight centimeters for the front and back, and it'll be folded. And then we want to add one centimeter to the top and the bottom for a seam allowance. You would remember that when I just measured my skirt before I got a final width of 106 centimeters so this is where you should insert your own value or whatever final value you get for your skirt and add about three centimeters on each side for ample seam allowance I can't fit it on the other side so just pretend we've got three on each side so our total rectangle that I want to cut out for my waistband is 112 centimeters by 18 centimeters. However, your waistband will likely look a little bit different. I want to cut out the exact same piece in my interfacing. Got the interfacing. We've got our nice fabric. Just iron it on, pretty much. Now that my interfacing's all on, I just wanna fold it in half and give it a press. We're basically making a giant bias tape. I'm gonna fold it this way. Fold it like this. If you didn't know, bias tape usually has one side that is like the tiniest bit larger than the other side. That's why we did the fold like over the entire band so that we can get the one side a little bit bigger than this side. The side that is slightly bigger will go on the inside of the skirt. So hold it up so that the inside part is facing you and the outer part is on the front, just as how it would be on the skirt. And measure, instead of cutting exactly where this line falls, we actually want to cut a little bit smaller actually. So about five or like four centimeters smaller mark here. And that actually allows you to tighten the skirt if you ever feel like the skirt is a little bit loose. And I'm actually going to cut this band right where we marked it. One very short waistband and one long waistband. This is my longer piece. I'm opening it back up. And here's our short piece. Let me open it up and place it on top. I know we haven't made the straps yet, but I basically know that I want them to be three centimeters thick. So we also need the holes in our skirt through the waistband because it's a wrap skirt with a tie to be three centimeters. So remember each width is eight centimeters. And so to create a hole of three centimeters, we should mark two and a half centimeters here. Oh my God, my pen's not working. Two and a half here. I'll mark two and a half centimeters here. Same thing for this side. Mark two and a half centimeters here. Mark two and a half centimeters here. So pretty much this gap is three centimeters and this gap is also three centimeters. We want to draw a straight line and we will draw a line where we're going to sew. Since this is the hole, don't draw a line here. Draw a line down the middle, draw a line down here. And now this tells us where we actually want to sew when we sew down this line. Skip this area because that's our holes. So you want to press open the seam here. And you'll see that there is a hole at the top and also a hole at the bottom. 
So now our waistband's back in half and this hole should go through both sides of our waistband and to keep it from you know moving about I'm going to do a top stitch around this hole. Super clean. It's like a little buttonhole, but it'll be for our strap to feed through. Now we want to cut out our strap. I'm going to make them six centimeters in width and probably like around 90 centimeters long. And I'm making it six centimeters because remember our holes are three centimeters. If it's six centimeters and once we sew it together, it'll be a little bit smaller than three centimeters. waistband the right side and I'm gonna wedge this tie that we just made and pop that right in the middle there I'm gonna sew a straight line across here to wedge that tie into place Finally, we are attaching the waistband to the actual skirt. I'm just gonna sew along the whole way, like across the entire skirt, and then flip it out and top stitch down. After basting one side of the waistband, we're now at the other side and we have to attach our second strap. Same as the last time, I'm just going to wedge it in the middle there and fold over. I'm going to sew on that line that I just drew. So basically, I stitched in the ditch so you can't actually see like any of the stitching from the front but I did stitch in the ditch from the front and because the back strap it was the tiniest bit bigger the thread has caught on to that and the back has automatically been attached and I just think that looks really clean and lovely and we're all done okay so i finished the skirt and i'm so happy with how it turned out and i was actually going to leave this video just at the skirt but i've kind of decided we need a top to go with this and if you're interested in making a modern hanbok chogori which is like the top part then i'll make that a separate video but today i'm gonna make a really easy singlet kind of tank top that you can pair with hanbok and it just looks so adorable i'll be using this vintage secondhand fabric that i have in my stash um it's gonna go so lovely with the red skirt but i want to tell you about a pattern that might be really helpful it is the new look 6483 and I think it's just really helpful to have a simple pattern like this where you can hack and adjust it to kind of whatever pattern you want and today I'm going to be using my self-drafted bodice pattern but if you don't have time to draft that up just buy something like this. I'm sure New Look is not the only brand that does this. If I do end up making the Chogori video, I'll try to use this pattern to make that and show you how you can hack like a basic pattern to do that as well. I'm taking a basic block pattern that looks like this and I'm actually going to fold a perpendicular was a perpendicular and straight line where the neckline is because we don't need a neckline for this tank top. I'm 
Now I'm gonna cut out some straps. This is our front. Go like this, our back piece, which looks very similar to the front. And I've got two straps. I don't know whether, oh yep. Yeah. I've got two straps that we will fold in half and flip. So it goes like this. First thing we want to do is put in our darts. Finish off this raw edge along the top with my overlocker, but if you don't have an overlocker, feel free to just fold down twice and so alternatively you can use a zigzag stitch on your regular machine. And I want to repeat the same step for the back piece. Fold this down either once or twice depending on whether or not you choose to use an overlocker. And the exact same thing with the um, front piece. Now we want to connect the front and back together by the side seams. So I'll sew here and I'll also sew right here. We have these raw armpit edges. I'm gonna do a overlock and just fold down once and just sew along that curve. I'm just gonna finish off the bottom of the top. Um, you can finish it however you want to, like a double fold and sew down. So it's not a raw edge anymore. To make the straps, this is an eight centimeter by 25 centimeter strip. I might have to shorten it because my shoulders are very shallow. What's the word? But yeah, we just want to fold it in half. So along here, so it's like a little tube and we'll flip it out and stick it onto our top. We're gonna touch it on like this, a little rectangular stitch. And then on the back and then same thing on the other side I really love hanbok so much and slowly I'm adding more and more modernized traditional clothing pieces to my wardrobe and I think the skirt looks really beautiful. The top is so cute for summer as well. I love these skirts because you could pair them with pretty much any top and you have a really cute outfit and you can also make them shorter if you want to. Check out Ana Luisa's massive Black Friday sale right now with buy one get the second at 60% off. Let me know what you think of the outfit and thank you so much so much for watching, I'll see you very soon in the next video.